Today we have Benjamin, who's developed his very own hand tracking engine with TensorFlow.js. So Benjamin, tell us a bit more about who you are. Sure, thank you for having me, Jason. So I'm a software engineer based in Zurich, and I have worked in the past with both web development and machine learning quite a bit. And so TensorFlow.js is really exciting to me because it sits at this intersection of the both of, uh, of, the, of mm -hmm. the two. And um, yeah, so in the past I've worked a lot of uh, on, a, on a lot of problems regarding machine learning, mostly related to text. Um, I and see. now I had this opportunity to explore a vision related task with my recent project and that was quite a good learning experience. Perfect. So what exactly did you create here? Yeah, so it's a hand tracking engine called Yoha. And so what it does is it processes the uh, video feed of your webcam and it detects the location of your hand in this video feed. And the goal of it is that it allows you to uh, quickly sketch something roughly similar to how you would do it um, on a whiteboard. And nice. this is also what was my initial inspiration for creating this because when uh, the pandemic hit us and forced us into home office, I really felt that um, this on-premise whiteboarding like experience was something that I missed. And so I tried to create something that uh, resembles that. That's very cool and a, and a very nice motivation for it as well. So uh, maybe we can see a demo of this in action. Yeah, sure. So if you head over to handtracking.io slash draw underscore demo, there you have a small example of how to apply this and draw some sketches with it. Okay, so here it is. How do I get started? Yeah, so first, if you raise your hand, it should detect that it is there and draw some lines on it. Perfect. And now you can close your index finger and thumb, and then it should start drawing, and then you can draw some sketches. Lovely. And there we go. And that's working pretty well. Nice. Amazing. And yeah, and as soon as I let go, it stops. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try and do a, a smiley face, maybe. Let's uh, clear it, I think, like this. That's right. There we go. It's, uh, so dot and a dot and a line and another line. Beautiful. There we go. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, looks good. So it detects 21 uh, locations on your hand and uh, it also detects two classes sort of. So it detects if yeah. you do a pose uh, like the fist and uh, the pinch gesture for the drawing. Yeah. We'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> now it seems you made a custom model to do this, right? It's not using our pre-made hand pose model that comes in TensorFlow.js. Exactly. So yeah. as I previously mentioned, the original idea was to enable these kind of drawing like applications. And so when I started out, I looked for what I could use. So if there's something already out there and I stumbled upon the model that you mentioned, and it's, it's a great model. Um, the reason why I decided to uh, create my own one was twofold. So one is um, it had to be optimized for these kind of pinching gestures. And the other one is that at least back in the day, so the TensorFlow model also uh, got a lot better since, but back in the day, I felt that the quality was a bit lacking for these kinds of hand poses. Sure, yeah, I remember I the really first version was a, <laughs> it was a little bit stuttery. <laughs> yes. But um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Good stuff. Mm. Yes. In particular, this uh, pinch pose. So if you think about how, how can we detect it, there's a common approach where you take the coordinates that one of the neural networks predicts and you feed these coordinates into another neural network that then acts as a classifier that says now these coordinates correspond to a pinch pose or not. And this is a very valid approach. It has pros and cons. And one of the cons though is that while the coordinates say something about the hand pose, they do not encode necessarily a lot of information about the volumetric information about the hand. So mm -hmm. you can have two hands that have a different uh, volumetric shape, so to speak, sure. and they yeah. are corresponding to identical coordinates. And that makes it hard for um, detecting whether your fingers are really together as soon as they're close together. So if I have a pinch pose like this where the fingers are really close, but they're actually not touching, um, this 
presents a limitation. And so one crucial difference in my model is also that I actually um, have simultaneous prediction of coordinates and classifiers, and that allows the classifier part also to actually observe the whole frame and maybe learn that actually the skin of the, say, thumb and index finger, as it's the case in Yoha, actually touch or not, which would not be possible or not that uh, well possible with the other approach. The hand one. Interesting. That's very, very cool. And I, I'm, I'm curious there, for the, for the training data to train a whole new model from scratch, it, it, was there some um, uh, open sourced kind of uh, repository of images or did you have to do this all by yourself? So it's, uh, the answer is I maybe didn't have to do it all by myself. This sure. is hard to answer because you never okay. know what uh, <laughs> you might have missed out of. Maybe there's a great data set that I missed out of out upon but uh, i decided yeah. to to create my own data set and okay. this was actually a tricky part indeed so i started out by just creating a small one first with just data f from me which of course worked yeah. well for me but not for <laughs> sure. other yeah. pe people right and then i yeah. expanded sort of the the breadth of the data set to friends and family and yeah. afterwards i even went one step further and collected some data using crowdsourcing Oh, wow, that's very cool. And did you have like some kind of pipeline to annotate or was that manually labeled by yourself or the people who were involved? So I had a pipeline to do the annotation, but there was no magic there. So okay. or yeah. let's, <laughs> let's say it was still a lot, a lot of work. manual. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I tried to create tools and, and applied some tricks to, to save me some work, but still, uh, yeah, a lot of manual work was Fair required. Enough. Well, it's very interesting and, and the end results are really amazing. So great research there. And I guess if people want to try this for themselves, uh, how can they get started? Yeah, so the easiest thing is to just head over to the GitHub page um, immediately on the front page. So in the readme, there's two examples uh, linked and that is a good place to get started. There's also a Slack channel where you can ask any questions. I try to check um, now and then if, if there's something new. So yeah, if there's any problems or so, just ping me there. Perfect. So we'll put those in the description after the show so everyone can find those and go contact you. Um, and I guess here, what's next on your to-do list for TensorFlow.js? Anything you have in mind for the future? Yeah, so if time permits, I would love to expand um, Yoha a bit further. So for example, adding more gestures, maybe even some that include the temporal dimension because right now it's just based on individual frames there's no sure. uh, gesture detection that uh, would involve several frames so there are a lot of opportunities and uh, yeah that would be my would be my next steps awesome i look forward to seeing that and thank you so much for being on the show today and i look forward to seeing how this project evolves yeah thank you and thank you for having me I don't know what I did there, but that's my, that's my cane. Okay. That's a baseball cap, there we go. There we go. Beautiful. <laughs> Capture that one, Eric. <laughs> uh, all right.